Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're doing episode five of my system design series, and we're gonna be talking about the CAP theorem. So what is the CAP theorem? Well, the CAP theorem, CAP, stands for Consistency, Availability, and Partition Tolerance. And the theorem tells us that in a modern system, we have to choose between any of these two options. So we have to pick either consistency and availability, availability and uh, partition tolerance, partition tolerance and consistency, or whatever other combination you can make. So let's explore each one of these pieces individually. What is consistency? We can say that a system is consistent if a read from the database is guaranteed to return the most recent write. But you're probably asking yourself, how could we not have the most recent data? We just put it in the database and we're going to read it back and we're not going to get the most recent. Well, in the case of a distributed system, as we discussed in the previous episode, you're likely going to have multiple database machines for fault tolerance purposes. We'll touch on replication in a further video, but for this example, let's consider a database with the following structure. We can see that here on the left, we have this database master and these boxes here are going to be clients, which are going to be reading from the database. And we also have a slave database, which is basically the same database as the master. And what the master does is that it replicates data, which means that when the master receives a write, it sends that write to the slave here, and the slave will put it into its memory. And now both of these systems should have, you know, the most recent write. But obviously, in the time that it takes for, um, you know, the replication to happen, another request could come into this slave and it could actually read stale data because the, all writes will always go through the master and then be you know, pushed down to the slaves. Therefore, uh, we could have a case where we actually read old data. And this is what the idea of consistency is all about. Whoops. Um, so what are some forms of consistency? We can have strong consistency, which means that the read is always going to see the most recent write. And an example of this is going to be a bank cash machine. Now let's think about why strong consistency is important here. Let's say you go to the ATM, you put your debit card in and you put your pin in and you say you want to withdraw $1,000 and okay, it checks that you have $1,000 and it parses that and deducts it from your account, gives you the money, you walk away. Let's say now you take your $1,000 and you go to the ATM right next to the one that you just used you put your card in and by some mistake this ATM is reading from a different database shard than the one that you just went through and actually hasn't received the fact that you have deducted a thousand dollars in the previous transaction and it's gonna tell you that you have a thousand more dollars than you actually do so you put your card in again and you try to take out a thousand dollars and what if you only had $1,000 to begin with? Now you will have taken out $2,000. The bank will eventually realize their mistake, call you up and say, hey, you owe us $1,000. And if you don't pay, you know, the police are gonna come get you. So that's just a bit of a comical example. But obviously in financial situations, it's very important that every single time you read from the database, you have the most recent da uh, data. <clears throat> because let's say, you know, it wasn't $1,000. What if you tried to withdraw a hundred million dollars and you did it twice and you took the bank for a hundred million? Obviously they never want that to happen. So they're going to want to use strong consistency for their applications to make sure things like that don't happen. <clears throat> Let's think about what eventual consistency means. Like the name suggests, a read may see stale data because of replication delay, which we talked about is the time that it takes from the data to be received in the master and then replicate it into one of the followers. But like the name suggests, the follower will eventually catch up. So one way we can think about this is likes on your Facebook photo. So for example, you log into Facebook, you make a post and people start liking it. And on some database shard, because we know that Facebook is a massive system and they have databases across the world, on one database machine, you may actually have 50 likes showing up. But if you were then to refresh the page, maybe a different database server returns your like count, and that one only has counted 46 likes. Eventually, the second server will get the actual count, which is 50, 
but in the meantime, you're gonna see 46 when the real count is 50. Now this isn't a real deal, big deal, right? If you see you have 46 likes versus 50 likes, you know, it's not the end of the world. Eventually you'll see the right one. It's not a big deal. At least you see something, right? So that's the idea behind eventual consistency. And then we also have weak consistency, which is not used uh, that commonly, but basically what weak consistency is, after you make a write to the database, reads may or may not see it. And it's a bit niche because you typically only see this in like video calling applications. So if you think about if you're using WhatsApp or Skype, sometimes you'll be on the call and you'll just drop a few frames and you know, the person will just freeze. And then you don't usually get that content replayed, right? Whatever they said in the past five seconds, it's, it's gone. Usually the video just skips to whatever the present moment is. Um, and that's, I guess, uh, an example of weak consistency, right? Whatever happened in that gap where something happened with the network or your app was malfunctioning, you don't really get it back. It's just gone, whatever. You may see it, you may not see it. The system just catches up and just starts giving you the live um, video feed again. So that's just a basic example of weak consistency. Okay, what is availability? <clears throat> in the context of a system, we can think of availability as the system's ability to respond to a request within a reasonable amount of time without any errors or timeouts. The system needs to be able to operate even if one machine or service goes down, and typically availability can be achieved um, by having multiple machines in order to give you redundancy. And we talked about this in the previous video when we talked about horizontal scaling. When one machine fails, another one can take over, right? So we can look at the Facebook newsfeed example again. And this time, instead of light count, we're going to be just thinking about your newsfeed. And, you know, in your newsfeed, you have a bunch of people that uh, you follow, maybe some pages, and they're posting content, new photos, status updates, memes, whatever. And, you know, someone of your friends makes a post and obviously when they make a post, you should see it. But it's not a big deal if you log into Facebook and you don't see that new post immediately. As long as you see something, that's fine. That's a good experience. You're still getting your newsfeed. You don't need to have the system always passing you the most um, up-to-date data. You at least see something, right? And you get that data within a reasonable amount of time. If you've ever used Facebook, Instagram, or any kind of social media website, you'll know that if you log in and then it takes forever to get your newsfeed loaded, then it's a very bad user experience and you're probably gonna put the app down, you're not gonna wanna use it. So typically with these systems, they want to return something as fast as possible to give you that good user experience. I think what Facebook said was they want like 200 milliseconds for newsfeed load. So the system needs to be able to respond really quick. You send that request for your newsfeed, you get it back quickly and without issues. Maybe it's not the most up-to-date version of your actual newsfeed because maybe some friend's post hasn't made it to you yet, but that's fine. As long as you see something and you see it quickly enough, that's fine for them. All right, partition tolerance. So the P, like we talked about in CAP, stands for partition tolerance. And to put it simply, this is the system's ability to, be, uh, to handle being cut off from the network. If a system can continue to function when the network goes down, it is said to be partition tolerant. But there's a catch. There's no such thing as a network that doesn't go down. If you've ever used a computer for more than a few hours, you know that the internet is unreliable. Even if you have expensive fiber optic connections, you're still gonna lose connection from time to time. There's nothing you can do about it, but wait it out and reboot your router. Hopefully that fixes it, it usually does. Thus, the CAP theorem can really be rewritten as, in the presence of network partitions, choose between consistency and availability. You cannot have both. Again, we come to a trade-off, and this is the consistency versus availability trade-off. As with all things systems design, everything is gonna be a trade-off. How to choose between consistency and availability will depend entirely on your use case and what the priorities are for your system. In, in an interview, this is why it's important to gather the requirements early so you know how to make these decisions. Do you use a consistent database like MySQL or opt for an eventually consistent NoSQL one? It depends. The goal of the system will ultimately be the deciding factor you have to make um, your trade-off with. 
And that's the video. The next video in the series will be starting a little bit of a deep dive into the basics of horizontal scaling and why it's a crucial component of modern distributed systems. Please make sure to leave a like and a comment as it helps tremendously with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.